Welcome to worship today online at Emmanuel United Methodist Church. My name is Ben Morris. I serve here as the pastor, and I'm so grateful that you have found us for worship today. Whether Emmanuel has been your church home for a long time, or you found us for the first time, just looking for a good word of hope from the God that loves you so much. We'd love to know who's with us in worship today. In the comments of our video on YouTube is a link to our website called a welcome card. It's just a way for folks to check in so that we can be in community together. Also, friends, in the comments of our video is another link to our website called a prayer card. Please let us know if we can be in prayer for you this week. Friends, we're in the second week of our Advent worship series called An Unlikely Advent. That's the title of a book by Pastor Rachel Billups. She serves in the United Methodist Church in the West Ohio Conference, and she's inviting us to listen to the stories of those characters during this Advent and Christmas season that we might not hear about as much. We always hear about Mary and Joseph. We hear about the baby Jesus. We hear about the angel that tells the story to everyone along the way. But last week we heard about Zachariah and Elizabeth. Zachariah, especially, and how he hears that news and is just so startled. And maybe how we, as people, aren't ready to hear the unexpected news that God has for us and the importance of having hope. We meet another character, friends, that we hear about every year during this Christmas story, but is not in the nativity scene. And that is King Herod, the one who, as the the magi or the, the wise men or kings from the east are coming and, and telling how they have been following the star and they want to come and meet this Christ child and come and find him and worship him. And King Herod is just so startled that someone might be born among them in his kingdom that would come and take power from him. He is just so afraid, and he claims that he also wants to find the child so that he can go and worship him, but all along he is just filled with fear and anger and jealousy and wants nothing more than to take the life of this child to secure his place. I'm glad you're with us, friends, so that we can hear about this man and how these qualities of fear and anger of jealousy are sometimes within us as people, but how God came even for this one villain of the story and even for the Herods within us. I'm so glad you're with us today. Can we pray over our worship? God, we are so grateful for the gift of this day, your love for us, and the invitation to continue to hear the story in a different way these unlikely characters, and how your unlikely grace continues to meet us in so many ways. We listen for you, God, through the music, through the Holy Scriptures, and ask your blessing on the many gifts that make our time possible this day. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. <laughs>
Friends, thank you for all of the ways that you share time and talent and financial gift through the ministries of Emmanuel Church. We're so grateful for being able to be a part of what God is building here through ministries like our food pantry and our dinner church ministry on Wednesday nights. As I record this on Thursday, we had about another 45 to 50 people joining us, folks that would not call Emmanuel their church home on Sunday, but they look forward to Wednesday nights for many reasons. Some of that is the delicious food, but a lot of it, friends, is the community. People that maybe at this time last year, they did not know well, but because as they come in to join us, they get name tags. And we have built from what was pockets of strangers into a community of people who really look forward to gathering together and fellowshipping. It's really strange, friends, how people were showing up right as the food was served, and now we have people who are gathering almost an hour before the food is served because they want to have coffee and, and check in and, and almost friends like we do with a fellowship time with church, even though that's after church, but we are gathering together to check in. How's your week been? I'm sorry to hear that your, your parents are sick. And those are the types of things that we talk about as this group prays together over the food. And then we have a Jesus story during the dessert time. Thank you for how your gifts help to support these ministries of Emmanuel. Whether you're with us in worship from time to time and perhaps sharing a gift on the offering plate or sending gifts through the mail, I use our online giving opportunities, which are available through our website, emmanuel-umc.org, or there is an app, the Vanco mobile app, which you can download to your tablet or smartphone and give in a recurring or one-time fashion. Thank you so much. Let us pray. God, we are so grateful that during this Advent season, we can see your hands and feet among us in so many ways, the generous hearts and hands of your people here the relationships being formed. We ask your continued blessing of the sharing of time and talent and gifts that make these moments possible. It is in the name of Christ we pray all of this. Amen. Our reading of gospel is from Matthew, the second chapter. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, Wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him, calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When Herod saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, he was infuriated, and he sent and killed all the children in and around Bethlehem who were two years old or under, according to the time that he had learned from the wise men. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If you have children our age, then you know well the Disney movie Frozen. It came out in 2013. The story of Princess Elsa discovering her powers as the ice princess, journeying to the top of the mountain and belting out, let it go. It was the soundtrack of our lives. But there was another part of the story that was always a little bit unsettling. 
at the beginning of the movie a visiting prince named Hans that seemed nice enough at first was courting Elsa's sister, the Princess Anna. It seemed innocent at first. They seemed to have so much in common. It was a match made, love at first sight. As they said in the song, we finish each other's sandwiches. But Hans wasn't really looking for love at all. All he really wanted was power. He wanted to marry a princess and become a king. He really didn't care about Princess Anna at all. He didn't care who was in the way or who got hurt as long as he got what he wanted. He was one of those swarmy characters that was easy to dislike when you really found out who he was. You weren't sad to see him imprisoned and on a ship heading out of town. But he was still an important part of the story. Without him to, trying to take their kingdom away, the two sisters may not have realized everything they had. There are those characters and people that maybe it would be easier just to forget. But they are an important part of the story. We even have those people and characters' friends in Scripture during this Advent season. They are an important part of the story. But it's a part of the story that maybe, just maybe, it would be easier to forget. We hear one such story and character in our scripture from Matthew's Gospel today. King Herod, an important character in the story, but not one that is included in very many nativity sets. Herod is the one that the Magi, the travelers from the each, are reaching out to as they're coming to find out about the birth of the coming king. Where is the one who has been born the king of the Jews? And Herod claims to be searching for the child so that he also could go and worship him. But while the Magi were curious and hopeful in their search, Herod only wanted the answer because he was angry and afraid. Historians paint a picture of this King Herod as a suspicious and cruel person with a history of killing anyone who he saw as a threat, including his three sons and his wife. So it's really not a surprise that he would try to put anyone in his way to death, is it? Even children. The scripture parallels history very well and gives us a similar picture telling us that this Herod was disturbed. Some translations say he was troubled, others that he was terrified. And we, we talked a little bit last week about how fear and hope are the opposite sides of the coin. And this prophecy of the coming king that was supposed to be out about hope because God had not forgotten the people. It was about hope. But Herod, more than anything, was afraid. He was afraid, terrified, troubled, afraid that the power he had cobbled together would slip away because of this new king that had been born. In his fear, in his anger, Herod returns to an old, familiar, and reliable brand of revenge. Something the people would remember. Killing the firstborn son of every household. The people would remember this one because it's what Pharaoh did God's, to God's people when they were in captivity in Egypt. Everyone under two years of age. He could make himself powerful. Herod the Great would be remembered. But Herod was not quite like Pharaoh. He was afraid. 
He recognized the limitations of his own power and privilege. He was a king, but really more of a placeholder. He was raised up above most of his own Jewish people, but still under the thumb of Roman occupation. His title of king was really only granted by those who were really in charge, the Romans. Caught in between the Roman occupiers and his own people, without a home, grasping for power, trying to hold on to a place. I think sometimes, friends, when we read stories, it is easy for us to just discard the villains and not care about where they come from or what happens to them. But I think we need to remember that evil does not just show up in the world. Evil begets evil. Heartbreak creates more heartbreak. Herod was propped up in a position by the powers of this world of sin and death. And he was ready to use those same powers of sin and death to hold on to that position as king. To keep a tight grip of what he had, of what he thought was important. But those very powers... Those very powers of sin and death are what the Christ child was on the way to defeat, to overcome. That while this one Herod thought that holding on the power was the most important thing in the world, God arrives displaying power through weakness, being born of a virgin in a manger. The villain plays a part in God's healing story, redeeming and restoring of the world. Jesus came to redeem even the seemingly unredeemable, like Herod. It would be very easy, friends, to paint Herod as the villain of the story and never think about him again like Hans from the Frozen movie, just wouldn't it be great if he were just locked up on a ship and sent down river? But I think one of the reasons we don't like Herod is that in a villain like that, we see some of our own limitations. Herod represents the resistance of this world to the divine kingship of Jesus Christ. Jesus comes to rule in our hearts with mercy and generosity and love. And what does Herod do at the news of Jesus coming? Herod immediately rejects the coming of Jesus with envy, jealousy, hoarding what he thinks belongs to him. Through the coming of the Christ child, we see the overwhelming love of God, that God in Christ comes to meet each one of us in the world. The story of Jesus Christ is one that draws the circle wider. He makes room at the table for tax collectors and sinners. He's anointed by women. He healed the lepers. He met the Samaritan at the well. Jesus meets and claims the very least among us. And God included, friends, even Herod, the villain of our story. Because even the very worst of us represents the possibilities of God's plan for redemption. God doesn't give up on any of us. God works all things for good. Pastor Rachel Billups, in our book for this week, An Unlikely Advent, 
describes this as the scandal of God's love in our chapter this week. That someone like Herod would be included in God's plan for redemption. She writes this, This kingdom is ruled by the scandal of God's love, a scandal that looks over all the world, seeing the Herod within all of us, and inviting us into a new way to live, a new way to be human, a new way to see the world around us. God's love invites us to be born anew. And when we witness the transforming power of that scandalous love, it transforms all of us. Herod. It is so easy to paint him as a villain. But at his core, he is someone who was afraid of change, afraid to release his power to God's new possibilities. He was filled with jealousy, trying to keep a grasp of the things important to him at the cost of others. Well, friends, I'm so glad that none of us have ever been like that. Or that God has never given up on people like that before. The good news of the Advent story is that even, even the Herods of this world are included in God's story of redemption and the Herods that are in each one of us. Let us pray. God, we do give you great thanks and praise that you have included each one of us in your plan for redemption, that you do not give up on anyone that even when we experience fear, you continue to offer hope. You continue to offer grace. You continue to overwhelm us with scandalous love. Help us to hear that message during this season. We give you thanks and praise in the name of the coming Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining us for worship today online at Emmanuel Church. So glad you could be with us. 
We have so many ways to be in community together during this upcoming Advent and Christmas season. Continuing this series together in Unlikely Advent, we have some ways to be in conversation and connection during the week. Tuesday evenings on Zoom at 7 p.m. We've been emailing out that link as well as putting it on Facebook. Our neighbors at St. James have a Bible study Wednesday afternoon at 2 p.m. And here on Wednesday nights following our meal uh, at about 6.15 or so. So come and join us for fellowship in those opportunities. Our cookies, fudge, soup, and a uh, sale. Cookies, fudge, and soup sale. Say that three times fast. That's coming up, friends, on December 9th from 8 a.m. to noon. So we look forward to that. Hope you'll stop by and see us. Stock up on some delicious holiday goodies and some warm soup for this season. We hope we see you on Christmas Eve. We'll have an online service available, but we'll have a couple different service offerings during the day. Our, it, Christmas Eve is a Sunday this year, so we'll have a 10 a.m. service that will be kind of a family service, a uh, story time for children, as well as a Christmas hymn sing. If you, there is a good uh, Christmas song from the hymn book you've not heard in a long time, have that in mind and come and join us, and we'll just sing as many as we can that morning. And then at 8 p.m. on Christmas Eve, we'll have our candlelight and communion service. Hope that you can be with us. As we go forth, may the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.